25. Amen. I want to speak to you tonight. Amen. From Matthew, and then I will be turning to Psalms 139 eventually. Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 34 says, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not. Neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they, which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field. We have some lilies up here. Is this lilies? White lilies. Consider the lilies on the stage of the life center. How they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. Yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Everybody say, number one in my life is the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all, all these things shall be added unto you. There is a blessing in the kingdom when you put God number one. Take therefore no thought for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Praise the Lord. The Lord has enough for today. There's enough for today for you to get you through to help you to encourage you think about today church live today there's enough grace there's enough blessings there's enough power in today to get you through if you believe that amen would you lift your hand and say lord i want you to speak to me tonight from your word there is enough for today lord and Just pray, Lord, that your blessings would flow. The power and the anointing, God, would continue to fall from heaven. Speak to your people. Let our hearts be open. Our minds open to your word. In the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you and you can be seated tonight. Today is the day of salvation. Living for God is still one day at a time. It's still one day at a time in living for the Lord. Consider the steps that we take to carry out the responsibility of today. Amen. You rolled out of bed and you took that first step for today. Your your steps are numbered of the Lord for today. There's a certain amount of steps that the Lord will bless you today. From the time that your feet hit the ground. Until the time that you walk into your house tonight and you go into your bedroom and you collapse on your bed and you say, wow, I've been to church twice on Sunday. I'm tired and I'm weary. There's steps that are ordered that are blessed from God. And I'm thankful for that today, that there's a certain amount of steps that He's blessed me with. I'm thankful for today. Does anybody feel that way? I'm thankful for today, for my days are numbered. Darren Hudspeth only has a certain amount of days that are promised to me. She touched on it this morning. Life is but a vapor. It's here today and it's gone tomorrow. Brother Paul and I want to live this day like there is no tomorrow. Every step that I take, every breath that I breathe today, this is a blessing from God. And He will give me enough for today. I don't know what 
what day is going to bring me this week, Brother Rose. Whether it be good or whether it be bad. Amen. God's grace is sufficient for today. I don't know what you're going to face when you go to work tomorrow. But today I know that there's enough grace. There's enough power. Amen. I don't know what we're going to face when we get in the car tomorrow. I don't know what's going to happen when we step into Target or to a restaurant. The next moment could rock our world. But until that happens, I'm going to serve the Lord with gladness today. Today. Hallelujah. Are you thinking and worrying about your clothes? The scripture says in verse 28, Why take you thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toll not, neither do they spin. There is a Creator that we serve, that we worship, amen, that caused these beautiful plants to be that certain color, that off-white, that beautiful lily that's there. The green leaves. It was God that created that lily. It was God that allowed that seed to grow. Amen. Why are we worrying about clothing? The scripture says, why are we worrying about food? God will supply. Consider creation, the lilies of the field. It's God who clothes the grass. It's God that painted the grass green when it's raining and brown when it's not. It's God that created and said, I'm going to have rye grass and Kentucky bluegrass, Brother Puckett. I'm going to create fescue that's going to stand out and it's going to be a certain green. It, it wasn't because of me, but it was because of my creator, amen, that created the lilies and the grass. Consider it tonight. The one who clothes the grass, I believe that he is able to clothe you. And everybody said amen. He's able to feed us and to give us something to drink for today. So don't waste your time thinking on these subjects. What shall we eat? Verse 31. What shall we drink? Shall we be clothed? Your Father. Verse 32. He knows the need that you have in this service tonight. He knows what you're facing today. Today. He knows what you have need of. And there is a first the kingdom blessing that we read from From verse 33, if you're present today, if you're serving the Lord, and you're putting Him number uno in your life, number one, there is a blessing that comes. There is a power that comes. You talk and you sing about the rain from heaven. If you will put Him first, if it's still first, the kingdom. I promise you, church, that whatever you're facing today, amen, God has enough. There's enough. There's enough for you in this service today for you to receive what you need to make it to the other side. If you believe that, would you lift a hand and say, thank you, Lord, for your word, your promises, your blessings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So take no thought for tomorrow. It's important that we think about today. First, tomorrow is always second. There's no swapping days. It's still Sunday and it's still Monday tomorrow. The calendar, it never skips around, Brother Don Inc. It's still one day at a time. It's still Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Maybe you're hoping it's Sunday and then Friday. But it doesn't work that way. It's one day according to the calendar. And His grace is sufficient for, for today. For Sunday. Quit worrying about Friday and the bill, and the problem, and the doctor's appointment. You need to live in today. Quit worrying about next week, and the problems, and the woes of the enemy. Live in today. It's an orderly schedule. Look right in front of you. Not tomorrow. But you need to be thinking about today. Today. Don't stress about the rest. Live Today, worship today, live in the moment of today's. There's enough blessings, there's enough power, there's enough anointing, anointing in this place 
today for you to get your victory and your blessing. Maybe you've already experienced it here tonight. If you haven't, it's today is the day of salvation. Don't quit, quit worrying about next month and next year. Live for today, Brother Billy. Your blessing is for today. Praise God. He said that he wouldn't put more on us than we could bear. Does anybody believe that scripture tonight? But we're the ones that we pile it on. We keep piling the responsibilities. We keep piling on our schedule. We keep piling upon our lives and our household. We are the ones that pile it on. We stockpile our hearts with the worries of the future. We worry about what's going to happen. And we forget about the moment right now in the house of God. Woo! Right now, today, we've got to get past the worry. For the TF10, he said that worry is the interest that we pay on trouble. And how true that is. If you're worrying tonight, you don't need to be worrying. You just need to go back before the throne and say, you know what, my blessing is for tonight. Sunday night. My blessing is tonight. Amen? But the problem is... 2 Corinthians chapter 10 touches on this. Our imagination gets us in trouble. Our imagination thinks the worst. Start stressing out and we start wringing our hands and rubbing our, our head and pulling our hair out because we're worrying about the future. The imagination always fears the worst. As a child, what was it? You were scared of the boogeyman in the closet. You were scared when the lights went out that there was some, there's got to be something under that bed. I didn't see it come in, but I can sense that there's something under there. Does anybody remember those days? Maybe there's some. Ken's asleep. He probably faces it. The darkness. Fear of the darkness. What's under the bed? What's in the closet? Our imagination. As children, it works the same way as adults. As we grow older, our imagination, we start fearing the worst. The enemy puts things into our minds that can destroy us. Amen? Imaginations is a distant day of despair that we think about. Where there's no grace. Where there's no strength. Where God is not present. It's way out there in our imagination. The worries and the fret and the fear of what is under this bed. And what is in my closet. And what I'm going to face this week, church, if I could just remind you that God's grace is sufficient for today. On this Sunday night, God will give you what you need today. What He blesses you with. What He empowers you with. It is sufficient for today. Yet 2 Corinthians 10 and 5 says, Casting down imaginations. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. We have to learn how to cast down the imaginations. Cast down the imaginations and say, you know what, devil? I'm not going to worry about it. I know it's coming on Tuesday, but it's still Sunday. I'm not out of church yet. I'm going to get my blessing tonight. I'm going to get my victory tonight. I, I don't care imagination that you're running wild. There's a blessing for me, today, today, take no thought for tomorrow. Because tomorrow, it's way out, it's without grace. God's grace is for right now. It's for this service. It's for this moment. It's not by accident that you came through those doors tonight. It was today in this service that God said, I want you to come into that sanctuary. And I want you to give me your heart and your soul today. So cast down the imaginations. Quit fearing the worst. Get rid of the fear in your life. Casting down imaginations. And every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought, every thought, is every thought in your mind being brought under the obedience of God? If it's not, you need to let Him have it tonight. And say, today, God has enough for me today. Amen? Today, today. Hallelujah. 
Praise God. Take no thought for tomorrow. Psalms 139. Psalms 139, verse 5 and 6. Wonderful scripture that I want to zero in on. But just to read at least seven or eight verses. O Lord, verse 1, Thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down-sitting and mine uprising. Life is a roller coaster ride. It's like going to Six Flags sometimes. Or what do you have here? Bush Gardens. It's up at the top one day. It's down at the bottom. Lord, you know my down sitting and my Sunday night uprising. Thou understandest my thought. There it is, afar off. Thou compassest my path and my lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, Thou knowest it all together. Thou hast, I love this, beset me behind and before. It's God that's beset me behind and before and, and laid Thine hand upon me. Is that a reassurance or, or what? The hand of the Lord is upon you. He's before you. He's behind you. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain unto it. This knowledge that we have, it's, it's just too wonderful. The psalmist, he, he couldn't hardly contain himself and explain it. It's just, it's just too wonderful to know that God is behind me and He's before me and His hand is upon my life. Woo! What a blessing to know that He's here today. Whether shall I go from thy spirit, or whether shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, there it is again. Woo! The third heaven. The Sunday night. Excitement. Anointing. Lord, if I ascend up into heaven, if I go beyond. Woo! Thou art there. But down in the bottom. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. The heavenly experiences of today and the hell experiences of today. The psalmist said that God is with you. He's with you through the good times, through the bad times. There is enough grace. There is enough power. There is enough strength for today. It may be a roller coaster ride, my friend, but I'm telling you today is the day of salvation. Hallelujah. But if I choose to go way out yonder, my imagination causes me to sweat and to wring my hands and to pull my hair out and to worry about what's going to happen on Thursday at 7 o'clock. Or that appointment that's coming in a month that you're just worried about, that you're just fretting about to the point that your stomach is sick and turned upside down. My friend, you need to get back to first base and understand, you know what, this may have been just a single today. But I'm taking it one day at a time. Today's not over. The sun's not down. We sprung forward. You can barely see it through the curtains. The sun is still up. Church, today's not over. There's still some more shouting. There's still some more victory. There's still some more blessings for this day. Seize today. Hallelujah. But we get in trouble when we choose to go way out yonder in left field. But we're by ourselves, and we're worried, and we're shook up, and we feel like we're all alone. If I choose to go there, I'm going by myself. There's a story about David when he was fleeing Saul. David, a man after God's own heart. David, that had the blessings of God upon his life. Fleeing Saul, he became weary. And the scripture says, I will someday die because of Saul. This was David that was chosen to be the next king. It didn't matter if, if Saul had dynamite in his slingshot and, and it was a David was going to make it through because he was chosen of God. There was a blessing, but, but he was worried. He was, he was stressed out. He was, he was worried about the next day of, of climbing over the rocks and trying to hide in the bushes from from Saul, he was fretting. He was stressed out. Church, we do the same thing. We need to remember who we are. That today there's enough strength. Amen? It doesn't matter what the enemy throws against us. You know what? There is power. There is strength for today. 
I'm chosen. I'm royal. I'm peculiar. I'm a child of the king. Glory. But there was David. There was no song. There was no song for 16 months. It was the darkest chapter of his life. He was thinking about tomorrow and how am I going to get away from Saul? He's stressing me out. I've got, I've got cuts on my hands and I'm just hungry and I'm thirsty. He was so stressed out and he was worrying. Woo! He was worried about a time in the future where there was no grace, where there was no strength, where there was no power. It was his imagination. And, and we do the same thing when the enemy is hot on our heels. We begin to run and we forget about the promises of God and we get out of today. And we start fretting and stressing. Church, we've got to get back. Amen? To today, this Sunday, there's a blessing that's coming. Amen? There's an anointing for you today. Hallelujah. Don't let your mind play tricks on you. Job said, that which I have feared has come upon me. Has anybody had a moment like that? Just overwhelmed with fear. Overwhelmed because of certain news and situations. Job was there. That which I have feared has come upon me. It has overcome me. He was at wit's end. But the weapons of our warfare, church, they're not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Cast down those imaginations. Somebody reach down in your ear. And, and, and get your finger up in your brain. Just use your imagination, okay? Go ahead and do it. Just do this right here. Everybody do this. I know it's a little strange. But dig down into your mind and say, you know what, enemy? That imagination, that thought that you have placed there, whew, I'm pulling it out and I'm casting it down. I'm casting it down. Whatever the lie is, whatever the, whatever the misconception is, Amen. You've got to cast it down. You've got to pull it out and say that the weapons of our warfare, it's not carnal, but it's mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Church, you have strength for today. Sunday's not over. I know you're wanting to run and go home and get rested and get prepared for tomorrow, but Sunday's not over, church. The blessings are still flowing. There's victory. There's a fresh anointing that's still coming. Amen? So live out and finish today. Enjoy the blessings of God. Live in this day. Live in this moment. Don't fret about what could happen. We were sitting in a restaurant on Wednesday night. Brother Craig Strong has a wonderful way of breaking the news that there's a tornado in the same city that our son Jordan lives in. He said, oh my goodness, there's a tornado that just hit Hazelwood, Missouri. You should have seen Sister Joy's face. Fear. Fretting. I thought it also, oh no, a tornado. Come to find out, Jordan was at church. It hit on Wednesday night while he was in church. The tornado hit between the church and between the college that he attends. That's about maybe two miles The tornado hit about six blocks away from his apartment. Houses are destroyed. He said, Dad, it looked like a war zone. I couldn't even get home on on the road to my apartment. I had to take a detour. Took him about an hour to get home. He said, there were oak trees uprooted. He said, I've never seen anything like that before. Houses demolished. Shopping center just vanished. Just gone. I'll be honest with you. We feared the worst, Sister Sparks. A tornado. Destruction. Is he alive? I was texting. Sister Joy was calling. Speak, son. Are you alive? My point is tonight, if we knew that a tornado was coming last Sunday, I believe Sister Joy would have bought him a plane ticket and we would have had him right here this past Wednesday night. But that's not the way it works. God has given us the grace for it today. We don't know what tomorrow is going to bring us, church. But today I have decided that I'm going to trust in the Lord. That I have prayed every day for my children and my family in this church for protection. And I believe there's enough grace. I believe there's enough power today to get us through the storms 
of life. Live in this day. We don't know when the tornado is going to hit. We don't know when the next hurricane season is going to hit. And I understand that we're getting close to that season. But we've got to live it day by day. Amen. Not worried about April the 17th. We need to be worried about today. Thankful for the grace that is sufficient for today. The power and the anointing that's here for today. We go one day beyond it. We go alone. Our imagination. Assuming the worst. As the psalmist said, I was at, at wit's end. My head spinning. My head filled with imaginations. Fearing the worst. Fearing the problems that they're going to overcome me and just tear me down and, and tear me up. Church, it's today. Today that we've got to live in. One day beyond, we go alone. There's a British soldier, they said in the year 2008, by the name of Ed Stafford. He decided to hike the entire length of the Amazon River. He started out on that task. He walked eight hours a day. Challenges every day. The heat, the humidity, the setbacks, the threat of the jaguar. He developed a severe skin disease as he walked through the jungle, as he walked along the Amazon. 859 day journey of walking through the jungle. You talk about determination. Clearing a path with a machete. He said there were centipedes about a foot long. I saw the snakes, the dangers. She said the weariness was there. He covered three countries. And two years later, after 4,000 miles of walking, he finally came to his goal of walking the Amazon River. They asked him, what was it that bothered you the most? He said, there were so many different things that I faced, including there was an enemy in the forest that I knew that could destroy my life. He said, it wasn't the enemy that I feared or the dangers. He said, what really challenged me was the mundane. He said, it was the mosquito bites. He said, it was every day having to get up and put that bulky backpack on and to start walking. He said, it was the present thorns. He said it was the unending pushback of the jungle that was continually pushing against me. As we walk through this life, church, there's going to be an unending pushback. There's going to be thorns. There's going to be setbacks. But I want to tell you, just like this man that traveled the entire length of the Amazon River, it's one step at a time. Amen? It's one day at a time. Saying it's Sunday. And I'm going to make it from Sunday morning to Sunday night. And then the next day I will tackle it when it comes. I don't care what the pushback is on a Sunday night. It's one day at a time with Jesus. Keep walking. Keep your faith in Him. He has enough to sustain you. If you believe that, would you lift your hand and say, Thank you, Lord. Take no thought for tomorrow. Trust Him. Trust Him. Trust Him as you walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Learn to trust in the Lord. As the setbacks come, when death comes knocking through it all, we must learn to trust Him. Today, let's stand. Today, my faith is still in the Lord. He's going to help me travel through the jungle. He's going to help me today. 859 days, 8 hours a day in the jungle. That's crazy. Sometimes life feels that way though. Don't look too far down the road today. Everybody say, I can do this. Today, there's enough grace. There's enough power. There's enough anointing. Today, Sunday night at the Life Center, God has enough for you today. I'm living out this day first.
And then Monday will come. Get you out of the problem. Cast down your imagination. And I want you to come to this altar tonight. And I want you to lift your hands. And say, God, you know what? Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It's high. I cannot attain unto it. Lord, you beset me behind and before. You've laid your hand upon me. And I'm stepping out. Everybody, that first step's the hardest. Oh my, everybody's looking at me. Everybody thinks I'm a sinner. I, but I'm going to the altar. The first step's the hardest. Don't worry about what other people are thinking. Take a step of faith and say, Today. It's today. This is my day of salvation. Woo! I'm going to swallow my pride. And I'm going to get up as close to that altar as I can. And I'm going to get my blessing. I know that we've shouted and we've praised and we've worshipped already. But I want you to lift your hands and say, God, I need a fresh touch. Lord, for today, I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring me. But today, I need my blessing. I need my fresh anointing. I need more of the Holy Ghost. Woo! Hear the battle cry. Devil, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I cast down every imagination that comes against the church. Today, there's enough grace. Today, there's enough power. Let's sing unto the Lord. Let's lift our hands and let's receive our blessing from God. There's enough church today. My God is more than enough. He will supply on my knees. He's my El Shaddai. He always looks out for me. Jehovah Jireh. He is my God. Yeah. Jehovah Jireh. He is my God. My God is more than enough. He can supply on my knees. Get your victory today. I'm not worried about Monday.
church bask in the presence of the Lord hallelujah go home singing go home rejoicing fall asleep praying and thanking the Lord for another day it's been a good day at the Life Center it's been a blessed day at the Life Center hallelujah I can do this one step at a time through the jungle don't care how long it takes. I'm going to keep walking today. Not going to worry about next week. I'm going to bask in the presence of the Lord today. Love you. Appreciate you. Keep walking. Keep talking. Keep trusting. Keep living the life. Hallelujah. Lord bless you. So glad to have Gilbert and his wife here tonight. Thank you for coming to the Life Center. And everybody else, God bless you.